the Advocacy Coalition for Equality will be referred to as ACE. ACE is a professional organization that advocates for and with deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf blind individuals who reside in Colorado. The list of ACE organizations will be scrolled down below. All of these ACE organizations are involved in advocacy work, specifically for deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf blind individuals. ACE members are required to have professional staff. The staff must be professional in order to ensure that the advocacy work is sustainable, that they have professional rules, ethics to follow, and uh, as a result are accountable. In addition, consumers need to know that they can go to their office and that professional consultation will be available. This professional consultation is referred to as technical assistance. And that means that the consumer will be able to obtain technical assistance through direct communication. The technical assistance can involve referrals and referrals to resources that will help address communication access. The consultation must be provided through direct communication without an interpreter. It is ACE's goal to improve technical assistance through collaboration with other members. Members are actively involved with ACE through ongoing participation in summit meetings, and also workgroup meetings. ACE has three work groups consisting of the information sharing work group, the one on one advocacy work group, and equal access in the justice system work group. The information sharing work group is responsible for outreach activities, website development. and ACE branding. The branding involved development of ACE's logo. The next work group, the one-on-one -on -one advocacy work group, follows ACE's definition of one-on-one -on -one advocacy as engaging in activities that empower the individual to navigate systems to access desired resources and services without barriers. This can include activities such as an legal advocacy, as well as other settings that require communication access. This may involve one-on-one -on -one advocacy. It can involve arranging interpreters or other types of communication access for meetings, court hearings,
It may involve the ACE member going with the consumer to the meeting, an appointment, a hearing, or to make a schedule for appointments. It is important to facilitate the consumer's understanding how to navigate the system and to provide moral support. But it is not the intent of the advocate to take over advocacy or to interpret for the consumer. ACE recognizes that one-on-one -on -one advocacy falls on a continuum of services ranging from providing information and referral not only to deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf-blind individuals, but also to entities that are covered by ADA Title I, Title II, Title III, and Section 503 and 504 requirements. ADA Title I involves employers who have 15 or more employees. They must provide reasonable accommodations. ADA Title II involves state and local governments being accessible. ADA Title III involves public accommodations such as restaurants, hotels, theaters, doctor's offices, stores, libraries, private schools, and daycare facilities. Section 503 of the Rehab Act of 1973 involves federal contractors and subcontractors with government contracts above $10,000. They must provide affirmative action for employment and advancement to employment for individuals who are protected by ADA laws. Section 504 of the Rehab Act forbids discrimination in any program that receives federal financial assistance. ACE's advocacy work is to work directly with deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf blind consumers for system navigation. There's the third work group, Equal Access in the Justice System, which develops technical assistance for consultation and referrals. This is to ensure that deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf-blind consumers have equal access to civil, criminal, and juvenile justice systems. The intended outcome is to increase access in particular communication access to attorneys and other entities in the justice system. And this may be through auxiliary services, which involves interpreters or CART providers. It may involve auxiliary aids, which are technology-based, such as video phones, caption phones, flashing lights for warning systems, audio induction loop systems for individuals who have hearing aids with telecoil switches the final goal is to have more appropriate placement outcomes for example if an individual is placed in a detention facility instead of a mental health facility where they may where uh, more appropriate services may be provided uh, this is something that is also addressed this is to increase awareness on the part of justice system workers which includes police sheriff dispatch court systems and the department of corrections detention facilities